So for those of you who don't know, I'm drawing to the close of a massive build on this Forester behind me. You know, built motor, SGI drive train, a whole heap of custom shit. Um, so we're at the point now where the motor is almost ready to be fired up for the very first time. So this is a full built, expensive Cosworth to shell built EJ257. It's got a lot of gear in it. It cost me a lot of money. So I do not want to risk any damage to that. So I'm going to show you guys how to build a good quality yet not overly expensive engine pre-oiler or pre-luber or you know whatever you want to call it. Basically we pressurize oil through all the motor, all the bearings, you know, everything. So just as if the car had been running and you've just switched it off, everything's got oil. So when we first turn that key, everything's lubricated, nothing's gonna score, nothing's gonna scratch, no metal to metal contact, there's all the film um, oil over everything. And it's also a good chance to check for leaks because everything's been off the car and yeah. So I'll take you guys over to the bench and I'll show you what my plan is and how I'm going to do it and then I'll quickly do it and Ben is coming today, my tuner, my good friend. Um, we're going to play around with the ECU, we'll probably end up cranking the car over a bit just to check the timing because I've done an aftermarket coil set up for it to check that they're firing right. So if you're interested in LS2 coils on a Subaru or basically any stock ECU, check out that video, I'll put a link up here um, or here, I can't remember, I always forget that. But anyway, I'll go show you what we're going to do. Alright, so I have bought myself a alloy air tank, um, pretty basic stuff, this cost me about maybe a hundred bucks. Um, I was going to make my own but I figured you know what, I'm that short on time and for the sake of a hundred bucks and this is all pressure tested and everything so there we go, it's already got the bung so we've got quarter inch MPT and then a three eighth NPT I'm pretty sure. So I'll start at the pressure side. So I've got a 3H NPT check valve, so flow can only go that way. And then I've got a brass bung, and I'm gonna tap a quarter inch BSP thread into it. So that will go on the pressure regulator. So I can set, you know, I'll probably set it up at maybe 80, 80 pound of air pressure. And then obviously the um, pneumatic hose connects onto there. So that will pressurize all that. In here we'll pour the oil. So this tank will be full of oil. Then we'll introduce the air. And then out here we've got 3 8 to, I can't even remember what that is. I had to, some of the fittings I had to get because I couldn't find the right ones in time. So I'm gonna basically cut that off and weld this half of the quarter BSP onto that. So it'll be on there like so. We've got this um, stainless gas rated ball valve. So that will, that's obviously closed now. Once we've got the pressure in the tank, We'll open that up and that will push pressurized oil into the motor. So through that I've also got another quarter inch stainless uh, locking bung. So I'm going to drill a hole in that and then weld this dash six um, stainless weld onto it. And I've got this dash six female to female which goes through a dash six 40 micron filter. And then I'll put you know, a dash six line. I'm going to make up a quick line with some of the dash six fuel line I've got left. And then it'll go to like an eighth inch NPT port. Yeah, straight fitting. And I'll just screw this port in. You know, probably, so you can see my oil filter and my oil cooler plate. I've already cleverly pre-drilled and tapped eighth inch NPT in here and put a bung in. I will probably be running a pressure sensor after I do all this, but that will be perfect for priming. So we'll pump all the oil straight through there. I'm gonna start cutting these things and welding them all. Um, nothing exciting there, I'll skip all that shit then I'll show you guys it fully assembled. And then later on when Ben gets here and we are ready for it, we'll chuck some oil in this and then we'll pump it through and see how it works. Slight disclaimer, I should have figured out a way to check the oil level. Uh, we're just gonna have to be careful to make sure that we don't run it out of oil and then pump air through and then push all the oil out that we just put in. All right, so there we have it, a finished product. It's all together. So, as you can see, just welded those two fittings together. And I've welded the dash six onto the quarter inch BSP. Then we've got this little 90, and then the 40 micron filter. Actually, we're just gonna check that the oil will actually flow through that first. And then the braided line, and this will plug into the 8th inch NPT um, 
oil cooler sandwich plate. So to use this, we're just gonna tilt it up like that, probably mount it on something, we'll see. And there, yeah, we got Ben over there, he's looking at the ECU, getting things set up. Hello from the other side. So once he's set with that, we're gonna pre-oil the motor and then we'll start playing around with the ECU and probably you know, crank it over a bit and whatever else, so. So we're going high tech here, guys. Try to do that without crashing the funnel. Schweppes. Schweppes. Mineral Source water. from Australian Springs. Oh, I can go into my motor, that's alright. Australia. Yeah, Australia. Alright guys, so it is time to load up the oiler. This is the stuff we're using to run it in. The old Penrite, also Australia. Do you want to do the honours? So I can fill the majority of it up, just yeah. so we don't run it dry. That hole's so small in the bottom. Alright guys, so <laughs> we're done. Air is hooked up, we've got 100 pound coming in, and we got about 60 charging the chamber. Looking good, no leaks, nothing there. So, all we gotta do is upend this, like so. We'll just hang it somewhere, jack the car up, and we'll hook up this to the 8th inch NPT port, as I showed you before, and then we should be able to let some oil through this. And also, I've taken the radiator out, the last time hopefully and then we can turn this crank pulley whilst it's priming so next thing this is just going to prevent most of the oil from going in there into there instead of throughout the motor so we'll just fill this up do you do this on your cars fill up the oil filter yeah but i don't use rusty filters hey 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 <laughs> just shows how long this car's been in the build don't worry it'll be out in another 500 k's yeah not even yeah, I do. Except the except the Toyota because they go in upside down. What do I end up doing work on this? <laughs> well, you're new to Subarus. I'll try to keep it that way. <laughs> Every time you learn something. Mate, you said your ultimate car is a Subaru. Not ultimate. Alternative. Alternative. <laughs> okay, okay. Every time you learn Whatever something, they say. Every time you learn something new, it pushes something old out. So I'm gonna be careful what I learn. <laughs> Yeah, actually, you do have a lot of valuable information. I'll, I'll give you that much. All right, next up, we're just going to do our 8th inch MPT port. All right, so just before we hook it up to the motor, we're just going to bleed it through. Oh, there we go. She works. So 60 pound of oil coming through there. So is that your first squat? Yeah. Okay, so now we can hook it up to the adapter I've put in there. Hopefully none of my fittings leak. I was kind of in a rush assembling them. But I'd like to think it's like muscle memory now. I reckon you should just leave this connected and then it'll be like that um, sump accumulator. <laughs> Accu sump. I was actually um, thinking about putting an Accu sump on this. I might still end up doing it down my line. I priced it up it was about 700 to 1000 bucks for, yeah. for a uh, auto valve, I think. Should we release? How fast do you reckon that's going to go? Oh, pretty quick, I reckon. Mm. I'm going to open it slowly and see. Maybe how it go goes. half. And yeah, um, just open it slowly. You'll start to hear it run through. And yeah. All right. Well, I suppose we'll put the camera down. Someone can control the valve. Slash, look for leaks in this section. Someone can turn the crank, and just make sure all the bearings are lubed up. So I'll get the old tripod. All right, here we go. Probably a good idea to have a rag handy because they could be a catastrophic thing. Ready? Yeah. Take it down, we'll see how she's all looking. 
All right, guys, so Ben's had to take off to a 30th. So while he's gone, I'm just gonna check that everything's got oil, or as best as I can. So. Dipstick, we're on the low mark. So I'm gonna put a bit more in the regular way through the oil filler. That's good. Um, I took one of these cooler lines off. There has been oil through there. The cooler is full of oil. So that's obviously where most of the oil went because it is quite a substantial size. Um, yeah, and judging by that, it should be fine. We will be cranking the motor over anyway uh, to check timing and everything before we fire it up. So that's basically as best as we can. Well, the best that we can do to ensure that the engine is fresh with oil. Anyway, I'm gonna start putting things back in. Uh, radiator in, I can probably pump that up for good. Anyway, you'll see that in the other video on the build of this, so. All right guys, so hopefully you enjoyed that short little video. Um, you know, I've seen guys make these out of PVC pipe and all kinds of things. I personally don't like that putting pressure in it unless you use some special pressure pipe and glue it correctly. Um, but, you know, it's pretty easy to make once you've got all the fittings and everything. No dramas. So, if you haven't already, check out the build series on this car behind me. It's pretty extensive, pretty custom, pretty crazy. We're drawing to the close of it. This is just one of the small components to get it running. So, anyways, I'll catch you later.